In general, it's best to separate different file types. However, separating everything is usually impractical and not possible. When you have RAID array structures, it's not necessary because the RAID array does the splitting up the striping and the mirroring all by itself. It doesn't need any help. The solutions for splitting up files physically on the disk, namely database files, in decreasing order of importance are this list here. The Oracle binaries are accessed the most heavily. The executable files, the on Windows, the oracle.exe file, the processes run by Oracle on a Unix box. These are accessed most heavily. They should be in the fastest area, the most easily accessible area. Always separate data files which contain tables and indexes because they're accessed more or less at the same time. Specifically in an OLTP database when you're running single rows or small range searches using indexes to access tables with row IDs or even in data warehouses where you've got lots and lots of sorting that uses large composite indexes. Separate redo and archive log files both from each other and from other files in the database. And also you can do the same with undo and temporary sort space. It depends when the different types of activity are running what's running at the same time. One of the most significant factors is putting redo log files onto the fastest drive type you have possible and separate from everything else, namely the database, tables and indexes, the binaries and the undo temporary sort space. Oracle binaries should go on an application drive. Obviously on Windows you put it on drive C and you always separate the Oracle binaries from the database files. Remember the binaries have very high concurrency usage. Separate the tables and indexes because they're read concurrently. They're read at the same time. Not exactly, but more or less, but it's close enough. This is most crucial in OLTP databases because you're generally running small transactions and finding individual rows. In an OLTP database with very large tables, you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to search into an index for a single row and get between one and three block hits and use a single block hit to find a table row, an individual table row. In the past, some OLTP databases have set up indexing onto sequential structures and tables onto random structures. This is actually most likely a mistake. It's best to actually access both randomly for small transactions because you rarely read indexes in large databases in their entirety. In large databases with small transactions, large tables, lots of rows, it's best to find indexes exactly and search through the binary tree structure rather than doing full scans. Data warehouses can ignore indexing somewhat, but not necessarily. However, the optimizer has a general rule that when it reads over 10% the size of a table, it actually full scans the table. As I said already, separate the redo and archive logs, both from all other files and each other. But preferably at least take the redo log files and put them on the fastest disk possible or the fastest disk structure possible. Don't go and fiddle with the redo log buffer if you've got problems with redo log file writing Quite often, if you've got very high write rates, you can often get frequent switching of redo log files, and you can get halts to the database when typically you don't have enough redo log files such that the redo log file that needs to be written to by DML change activity is still busy copying to an archive log file. Duplicate the redo log files, put them on a separate drive structure, preferably the most efficient, possibly even a raw structure, to give them the fastest write access possible. Redo logs and archive logs, remember, are only ever read in recovery, and generally this is a much slower process than actually day-to-day -day DML activity. It helps to separate undo and temporary sort space because they have different applications and they are actually being written to at the same time. Sorting occurs when you execute a query such as using an order by clause and it resorts data. Undo is always written to when you're doing DML activity. Quite typically, these two areas are not necessarily written to by the same SQL statement at the same time, but with an OLTP database with high change rates, they're being written to all the time because different users are doing different things. Some users are changing things and some users are doing sorts and reporting. Once again, remember that undo space typically only has anything but write activity when you're in recovery or you're rolling back. Preferably, your application should be doing a lot more committing than rollback. If you need to place undo and temporary space with other files, do not mix it up with the redo and archive logs, but put it with the tables and indexes. 